So my helper and I have just pulled all the watermelons out of here and now we're going to take a look at the pumpkins that are in here. So there's a few pumpkins. Uh, these are butternut pumpkins. Uh, there's not as many as I was hoping for but there was only probably about five or six plants in here. So for that amount we're still going to get a few pumpkins. Um, I do have one that has split here. So I'm going to cut that open and probably use that out and up straight away. Um, but we're going to get the rest in and I'm going to show you guys how to tell when your pumpkins are ready. Um, we will do, but and they need to get washed first before we take them inside. Um, washed and dried before we take them inside so we're not dragging any dirt in the house. Hey guys, we are up here in the house now and I'm going to show you how to tell if my butternut pumpkin here is ready for harvest. So I've cut out a nice big section with the vine on it so that you can um, see exactly what the process is um, if you were down in the garden. Now I've done it this way because it's way too hot outside at the moment for me to be doing it down there. And um, my helper who was helping me to bring them up didn't want to hang out down there as well because it was too, way too hot. And the March flies are here. Yay! <laughs> so this is a butternut pumpkin and this is the vine uh, that it's on. Uh, so this is the other end here where I've cut off that was attached to the rest of the plant. And then the pumpkin and then it runs to the end of the vine over here. But a little bit of quick information for you. There is no roots on this particular specific one here, but uh, anywhere that the pumpkin plant touches the ground, it will grow more roots. Uh, so that if any at somewhere back down the other end of the vine, uh, it breaks or gets damaged, the rest of the vine will continue to grow. Um, but this one hasn't got any on it, otherwise I'd be showing you, but it will just put down more roots Helps we get some more nutrients from different parts of the garden as well. Right, so this is laying out in the garden, guys. This is the stem. This is where the stem continues to the end. Uh, so this is my pumpkin. Um, with the pumpkins, that's in there. They do have tendrils on them, like a watermelon. But I. I don't think that they have a lot to do with telling you whether the pumpkin is ready or not. This one is still green. Um, so you can see this one is still green. I, the, to me, this is just where they grab hold of something. Um, if they're going to climb up something and they just use their tendrils to grab onto something. So, uh, But this is the pumpkin where it attaches the stem, where it attaches to the plant here. And you, should be able, you can see here that it's gotten quite brown. Um, which is an indication, one indication that it is ready to harvest. I'll put some photos in of green stems so that you can see them when they're green as well. But if you've got pumpkins, you'll know that they're green. Um, so once this here, the stem bit here, starts to go brown and you pretty much can't force your fingernail into it and it's really, really, really hard, like you can't penetrate it. Um, that is a good indication that the pumpkin is also ready to be harvested. The other one is when you push your nail into the pumpkin skin itself and I'm leaving the tiniest little indents but I'm not penetrating the skin. So that is the two indications that I use. The main one is the color of the stem. Um, if the plant itself is still green like this one is, so you can see this, this one is really still quite green, this specific one. That doesn't mean that the pumpkin is not ready. It just means that the plant itself may have other pumpkins on the vine or it is still happy to keep growing and maybe if you're lucky, produce some more pumpkins. Uh, so when you get your pumpkin and you're happy that it is very firm and hard um, What you want to be doing then is just cutting it off from the vine Now when you same thing with most other vegetables give it 
the maximum, maximum amount of stem you can. This helps reduce the chances of bacteria getting into the pumpkin itself and causing it to die off, uh, go rotten prematurely. All right, so you can see. So hopefully you can see on top of this little pumpkin, there is like a liquidy stuff that is forming. Now that is it making itself a scab over. Let it do that, that's perfectly fine. It's like a wound, it's just covering itself over. So let it do that. Um, this is a pretty good angle, pretty good look at how brown the stem actually is here. Um, so the next part of this process is to let this pumpkin cure. To do that, you just need to let it sit somewhere where there's plenty of circulation outside under the shade. Um, I will show you where I'm gonna put mine for uh, anything from a few days to a couple of weeks. It really just depends. This stem here needs to dry out a lot more and this needs to stop weeping. At this stage, you need to give them a wash. Um, to get any of the dirt off them I'll give them a wipe over I'm just going to give them a wipe over with a damp cloth because they'll still be sitting outside so I'll repeat that process again before I bring them in the house just giving them a wipe over so I usually wash all my vegetables anyway before I start cooking with them so this is not a bad size pumpkin I didn't get a lot of pumpkins this year but um, what I have gotten they're a pretty good size butternut pumpkin So for those who are interested in knowing how long a pumpkin is going to last, once you've cured it and left it outside to cure, um, so you can see how this is what they'll look like. They'll look like all shriveled up. So they'll all be dried and shriveled up the stems of them um, and then they're ready to come in the house. They can come in the house a little bit before that, especially if your weather starts to cool down overnight because you don't want to get any moisture on these. Now you can see this one looks... <laughs> Doesn't look too happy. Well, I wouldn't be too if I was a 12 month old pumpkin. That's right guys, these four pumpkins here, I've had them sitting here in the pantry in my little shop area for the last 12 months. These were last year's harvest. Uh, this one is only just getting soft, I can feel it in the bottom. So he is not um, any good for eating. It'll be going out to the chickens. Um, this pumpkin here, this is actually the same, similar pumpkin to that, but I think it's taken on some of the butternut pumpkin because they all are in together. This one here, he still sounds really good. Looks like he's going to be good to eat still as well. That is a 12 month old pumpkin. These are butternut pumpkins. They, I know they don't look like butternut pumpkins now, but these are two 12 month old butternut pumpkins as well. Neither of them are any good to eat. But the fact that they've sat in here for 12 months is amazing. Now, when I say they sit in here for 12 months, I did have some pumpkins that only lasted four weeks before they started going rotten. Um, so you do need to make sure that you come in on a weekly basis and check them wherever you are storing them. Right, so when you're storing them, guys, this area I store them in at the moment has got other stuff stored in it. So it's not available to be able to show you. But if you're going to store them, you need to store them. Um, I made the mistake. I should have had newspaper underneath them in case they did go rotten. So I've got some marks on the on the, on the the shelves that were on. Um, you can put them into a basket. These four here were in a basket. And um, they were stored in a basket for the last 12 months. Just as long as they've got some good airflow. They're not in an area which is moist. And... Um, just making sure that they are kept dry and in a cool, dry place. Then your pumpkin should last anything from 6 to 12 months. So quickly, while we were out in the garden, uh, you would have seen this one at the beginning of the video. Um, there is some splitting happening in here. I do believe the splitting is due to um, the watering. Um, too much water and, and not enough water and then too much water. which is And then all the heat that we've had has caused this pumpkin to split. Uh, so a close inspection of this Pacific split, there doesn't appear to be any bugs gotten into this 
pumpkin as of yet. So since I have to use this up in the next couple of days, I'm going to give it a wash and then I'm going to cut this open to show you guys. So it's all had a nice little wash. You can see the stem nice brown and firm. So it was definitely ready to be harvested. And look at the color of that. Oh, beautiful. Now, I don't eat raw pumpkin, so I'm not taste testing it. But this is a beautiful looking pumpkin. Definitely well ready to be eaten. So I'm just going to... Nice, firm pumpkin. Very firm pumpkin. Look at that. Look at that beautiful looking pumpkin. So these seeds are very savable as well. Take them out, put them on a plate, let them dry out, put them in a container and date and label tag them as we do everything else. Um, but this pumpkin, you can see how beautiful and yellow it is. So guys, that is how to tell if your pumpkin is ready for harvest. A couple of little storing trips, tips. I'll put a couple of pictures in as well so you can see how I'm curing mine. And guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button. Leave some comments down below how your pumpkins are getting on. Uh, if you've got any questions on how your pumpkins are going on, I'm happy to answer them. And uh, don't forget, there'll be a couple of videos on the side here for you to check out. Until next time, happy pumpkins! <laughs>